Yep, Dave here, the bearer of bad news. The information you don't want to hear, but the information you need to hear. The top 10 most unreliable SUVs of 2023. Do not buy these. Let's begin. At number 10, the Mini Countryman. It's hard to imagine a strong reason to consider this vehicle in 2023. Aside from its unique looks and somewhat upscale feel, it doesn't really excel in one area, except below average reliability. Minis are not known for aging well, neither do I. With a history of oil and coolant leaks, engine and transmission problems, and various electronic issues as well. And when something goes wrong, and it will, it'll be expensive to repair. Considering what you're getting for the money, the Countryman is a bit overpriced, starting in the low to mid-30s. So even though they do have somewhat of a unique and cool image, if you're looking to buy a small crossover SUV, pass on the Countryman. Next, the Buick Encore. Buick's smallest aging crossover is just as uncompetitive when you compare it to other small SUVs, most of which offer better value for your money. But not only does the Encore offer poor value, but it also has a hit or miss reputation when it comes to long-term reliability. Some owners say they're happy with this crossover. Others, not so much with constant complaining with all kinds of Ongoing issues, including problems with the engine, the six-speed automatic transmission, various and different electronic issues. Now, you could consider the newer and slightly better Encore GX if you really like the Buick, but the better decision would be buy a different small crossover altogether. The Mazda CX-30, the Crosstrek from Subaru, Honda HRV, or the Corolla Cross from Toyota all have much better reputations for reliability, and they give you a lot better value for your money as well. That leads us to the Jeep Renegade. The Renegade, another small and aging crossover that really doesn't have that much to offer. It does share a lot of components with Fiat, which explains its below average reputation for reliability. Not only can the Renegade become problematic as they age, but they're not exactly cheap to repair or cheap to buy either. Jeep is betting on their reputation and image and hoping that you're willing to pay a premium. But if you really want a Jeep and you want that image and the off-road capability, I'd say go for the Wrangler instead. At least if you buy a Wrangler, you're going to have a vehicle that holds its value over time, which certainly is not going to happen with this Renegade. With its below average reputation for reliability, poor value for money, and poor resale value, this is another example of an SUV that you just want to avoid. The Lincoln Aviator also makes this list. It's certainly quite a luxurious and beautiful vehicle to drive, but it's just too expensive for what you're getting, especially with the much higher quality alternatives that you could buy instead. Much like its non-luxury three-row cousin, the Explorer, the Aviator has many reported quality issues, recalls, complaints with the transmission. And not only does it have below average build quality, but it's very overpriced for what you're getting especially if you go for the plug-in hybrid version, which is the Grand Touring. The plug-in hybrid would have been a good option if it had good electric range and good fuel economy in hybrid mode, but sadly, both of those things are not there. As a whole, the Aviator is just an overpriced SUV that really doesn't deliver when it comes to performance or reliability, so it really isn't worth considering. You're better off with the Acura MDX. The Blue Oval has another unlucky participant on my list, the Ford Bronco. This was highly anticipated as an off-road vehicle and launched with so much hype and excitement, but unfortunately, Ford is not known for smooth launches, especially with the all-new models, and the Bronco can relate. The most significant one being engine failures with the 2.7-liter turbo EcoBoost engines. The National Institute for Highway Traffic Safety Administration has reported valve train issues where the valves can drop inside the cylinder chamber, effectively destroying the entire engine. You'd be safer buying something like a Toyota 4Runner, which has a better reputation for long-term reliability and ice pond domination. Speaking of potential engine issues, the Kia Seltis, which I do like, although the Seltis is relatively new to the market, like the Bronco, launching back in 2021, it also has its fair share of issues. The most significant one has to do with the 2-liter 4-cylinder, which unfortunately is part of a major safety recall. Kia was forced to recall a ton of these engines back in 2021 for having defective piston rings, which could lead to oil consumption and sometimes complete engine failures too. Now you might think you're safe going with the optional 1.6 liter turbo engine on the higher trims, but unfortunately this is one that also has issues with a seven speed dual clutch transmission. So whichever drive train you go with, it seems that you just can't win with the Celtis. So if you wanna buy a small crossover SUV, test drive the CX-30, the Corolla Cross, 
or HRV instead. Next, the Hyundai Kona. No secret that the Kona and Kia share a lot in common, and the Kona is actually the platform cousin of the Celtis. Go figure. The 2-liter 4-cylinder engine is part of the same engine recall with bad piston rings, with oil consumption issues and complete engine failure, and even sometimes engine fires. And the dual-clutch transmission on the higher trims with a 1.6-liter turbo engine is also known for being problematic. It's pretty unfortunate this major safety recall for both Hyundai and Kia have affected millions of vehicles over the past decade, and they're still dealing with those issues all the way up to 2021. Now, even though technically both claim to have solved these issues for 2023, they have made these claims in the past only to later expand the recall to newer vehicles. Number three, the Mercedes GLE. It's no secret that a lot of high-end European luxury SUVs are known for being problematic past their warranty period, and the GLE is no exception. Even under warranty, the GLE is questionable, and it's actually ranked as one of the most unreliable SUVs that you can buy. They are known for having all kinds of different issues with drivetrains, suspensions, electronics, and being a Mercedes, you can bet all these issues are going to be extremely expensive to repair, especially as the vehicle ages well past the warranty period. So if you want to buy a long-lasting SUV that's a luxury one, just forget about the GLE. Buy something else, maybe like the Lexus RX350, for example, which has a much better reputation for reliability. Number two is the Jaguar E-Pace. It's hard to believe that anyone would even consider buying a Jaguar brand new in 2023. The company has an aging lineup that's just becoming less and less relevant, and the E-Pace is a great example of an uncompetitive SUV that offers poor value for money and below average reputation for reliability as well. Jags are certainly not known for their stellar build quality. They're also known to be very expensive to repair beyond the warranty period, much like the Mercedes. So if you're considering buying a high-end, small luxury SUV like the E-Pace, you'd be better off buying maybe the Porsche Macan, the Acura RDX, or the Lexus NX350. The most unreliable SUV you can buy, the Land Rover Range Rover. Yes, this is going to be a huge surprise to many of you because it's been around forever. The Range Rover has always had an iffy reputation when it comes to reliability. It really doesn't matter whether you go with the full-size Range Rover or one of the smaller ones like the Velar or the Evoque. They are all known for having below average build quality and all kinds of reliability issues as well. They are extremely expensive to work on and repair, and it's not uncommon to experience issues even under the warranty period. And who's really willing to deal with all those kinds of issues, especially with a really expensive vehicle like this one? So do yourself a favor. If you want to buy a high-end luxury SUV, buy anything other than the Range Rover, and you're most likely going to be better off, in my humble opinion. One final note, if you are in the market for a new vehicle soon, great. Connect with your local dealership and price and test drive at least three different vehicles. A vehicle's strengths and weaknesses can only be discovered when you are behind the wheel. My reviews can be good, but you need to test drive these yourself. Visit quotes.everymandriver.com, select the make model in your zip code, and you'll get invoice pricing in your area on those vehicles. Shop smarter with price quotes at quotes.everymandriver.com. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.